Alright, welcome to the third talk in Applied Combinatorics. Today I will be going over combinatorial proofs. So, first off I want to talk about how to go about combinatorial proofs, and then I'm just going to do a couple of examples of working out some combinatorial proofs. So, combinatorial Combinatorial proofs will involve some equality, but rather than using algebra to show that the two sides are indeed the same, you will pick a set to count and show that the left hand and right hand side count the same set. So sets can be anything, but bit strings are one of the most useful sets to count. So I, in the examples I work, I'll use bit strings, but I'll also have an example where I choose a different kind of set to count. So let's just go into some proofs. So prove that 2 to the n is equal to n choose 0 plus n choose 1 all the way to n choose n. So let us count bit strings of length n. Left hand side will count normally since there are 2 to the n bit strings of length n. So left hand side, it's easy because we know that there are 2 to the n bit strings of length n. The right hand side counts as a set because the n choose 0 counts the bit strings with 0 zeros. The n choose 1 counts the bit strings with 1 zero. And the n choose i for i between 0 and n counts the bit strings with i zeros. So each n choose i counts the bit strings with i zeros, and when you sum them all together, you'll get every possible bit string. Thus, both sides count the same set, and the equality holds. Pretty simple. All right, let's work another one. Prove that n choose k plus 1 is equal to k choose k plus k plus 1 choose k plus all the way to n minus 1 choose k. This one's a little bit more difficult, but we're going to do bit strings again. So let us count the number of bit strings of length n that contain exactly k plus 1 zeros. So the reason I chose, I chose bit strings because they're an easy set to count, and I know that bit strings, when you see a choose function, they're pretty good go-to set, and the reason I chose the bit strings of length n that contain exactly k plus 1 zeros is the left-hand side, we know that already counts it, so we just have to say, notice the left-hand side is straightforward counting, that counts the left-hand side. The right-hand side is a little more difficult, so instead of working from the k choose k to the n minus 1 choose k, I'm going to work backwards because that's the easiest way for me to figure this out. So notice that if a zero occurs in the nth position, so the very last position, if a zero occurs, then you have to choose k zeros in the remaining n minus one positions. So a zero is put in the last position. Set that zero aside. Then, the remaining k zeros have to be chosen from the n minus 1 positions. Likewise, if zeros occur in the last two positions, then you have to choose k minus 1 zeros to be chosen from the remaining n minus 2 positions. So you have n minus 2 choose k minus 1. Notice how I'm working backwards here. And in general, if zeros occur in the last i positions with i less than n minus k, then there are n minus i choose k plus 1 minus i. Different ways that can be done. And then you sum, when you sum all of these together, all these combinations, when you sum them together, it will account for every possible bit string with k plus 1 zeros. So when you have k choose k, that's because your all your 
k plus 1 zeros occur in the last k plus 1 positions. And so you just work backwards, sum them all together, and get n choose k plus 1. Thus, the left and right hand sides count in the same set, so the equality holds. All right, one last combinatorial proof I want to do today, and this one we won't be counting the strings. So prove that 2n choose n is equal to n choose 0 squared plus n choose 1 squared plus all the way out to n choose n squared. So I want to count the number of ways to make two teams of n players. So two teams n players. So left hand side is straightforward counting because you have two n players and you want to choose n people for the first team. So when you choose n people for the first team, notice the other n people will go to the other team. So for the right hand side, let us assume that the first n players are boys and the second n players are girls. This is just an easier way for me to explain how this is working. So you have n boys and n girls. Notice if you have a team with no boys, then you have n choose 0 because you're choosing 0 boys and n choose n because you're choosing n girls. But notice, remember from our previous video on combinations, we proved a combinatorial identity that n choose i is equal to n choose n minus i. So this is equal to n choose 0 squared. Likewise, the number of teams with one boy is n choose 1 times n choose n minus 1, which is n choose 1 squared. And we can go this and say that in general, a team with k boys is n choose k times n choose n minus k, which is equal to n choose k squared. So when you add all these the team possible teams with zero boys, one boys, two boys, all the way up to n boys, it's the total number of teams able to be formed. Thus, both sides count the same set and the equality holds. So combinatorial proofs, you just have an identity, you pick a set to count, and you count it in two different ways to show the equality holds. All right, that's all I have. I'll, I might have a video up with some more examples on combinatorial proofs, but you'll see some more of them. And thanks for watching.